dark will turn. Um, I would say it's dark, been darker than the first two seasons, even though season two did get pretty dark towards the end. Um, regarding uh, uh, Clark and Lex's characters, um, and then knowing that the artificial intelligence is inside of Lex, we're going to expand on uh, what we can see or look forward to this season regarding the artificial intelligence storyline. I think what we've sort of, where we are right now is we know there are two AIs. We know that Allie has been looking for the other AI for a hundred years, really, since her creator left her uh, to go up and work on the second AI on the space station. And she doesn't know yet that it exists, but I think it's a safe bet that she'll figure that out eventually. And, you know, the story of the season from here becomes, you know, that's the MacGuffin, the flame that came out of Lexa is the thing that everybody wants to get their hands on. The next commander needs it because she can't be the commander until she ascends. It's called ascension when she puts it in her head, when it's put in her head by the flame keeper. Um, and so she needs it, and or he, whoever wins the conclave. Um, and of course, you know, Clark wants to make sure that the right person gets it because Lex's memory is in there, Lex's mind may be in there, and so does she want to um, you know, let it fall into the wrong, I would say, hands, but head, it would be more literally correct. So, you know, everybody is going to be after this thing, and it's going to drive the story in a very intense direction. Yeah. I think that that's definitely something that Clark is worried about. You know, whoever the next commander is is either going to follow Lex's uh, legacy or not, and she's going to do her best to make sure that the person who comes next will. Um, and so, and eventually, I think you know what I've what we do, we do this season in terms of sides is a new threat rises that sort of means that everybody better figure out a way to get together, or we're all going to be. Toast. Sorry for being ambiguous. Why do you think characters resonate so much with the audience? Like, what is it that makes them special? The actors are incredible. I mean, I feel like, you know, this show has connected with the audience in a really emotional, powerful way. Way more than I ever realized, obviously. Way more than I realized in the last three weeks, for sure. Um, but I don't know what the answer to that is. I and mean, I think it's a good story. I think they're great characters. And I think the actors are all just firing on all cylinders. They're sort of all, they've all found a groove, which is exciting for me because anything that we write and give them elevates, you know, all the time. Um, and only continues that way for the rest of the season. Did you have in mind when you started season three that you wanted Bellamy to kind of be on the other side now because he was always aligned with Kane and Abby? Yeah. And now that Pike is in the picture and Bellamy's kind of switched sides, is that where you wanted Bellamy to go? Yeah, you know, one of the sort of things I wanted to do this season was take him down that path. F figure out a way to turn Bellamy, you know, I, I, and I realize that's a dangerous thing to do now in hindsight with someone who's beloved like Bellamy who had the direction that he had for the first two seasons going from someone who was kind of a bad guy to someone who was, you know, pretty heroic in season two by the end. Um, and yet, you know, his experience, I think what's been lost a little bit is that his experience was different than ours as an audience and, and as Clark's, you know. Clark fell in love with Lexa and, and realized that there were nuances in the grounders and and Bellamy didn't. Bellamy was, as Bob said on the panel, he was in Mount Weather really for the most part after episode 10 last season, which is really when Lexa and Clark began to, you know, evolve as a, as a thing. And ultimately, you know, he doesn't have the same experience. All he knows is that the army that was out there were the same exact people that were killing him and his friends in season one. And so, you know, the answer is yes. Uh, I knew from the beginning that that's what we were doing. I was trying to create a, a wedge where, you know, the internal conflict between the group and internal conflict in Arcadia and internal conflict in, in um, Polis as well. Um, and so, and then again, it's about that external conflict coming and hopefully figuring, everybody figuring out that we better get back together, otherwise we're all, all, all going to die. We won't make it. So. Does that answer that question? Yes. Good, good. Thank you so much, guys. All right. Thank you, guys.